Hi, and welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. So with the end of my technical flow, I'll be spreading out those technical videos a little bit, and in between, I'll be doing some videos now on my mini sims and eventually the integrated sims. But first, let's recap the training so far. Boot camp was the beginning of everything. It included all of the new trainees from all of the flight control disciplines and gave us an overview of the ISS and the basic responsibilities for all of the positions in mission control. Command training is where we learned about the tools and actually how to command to the ISS and where we got command certified. After my first oral board, which lasted about two hours and in hindsight wasn't nearly as bad as that recent eight hour one. The technical flow is where we learn all of the operator level knowledge and take written and practical exams to show that we know our stuff, can run procedures, respond to failures, etc. Now this is the part that ends with that eight hour oral board where they ask us about everything we've learned to make sure that we've retained it. About midway through our technical flow, we begin our mini sims, which is where I'm at now. So the mini sims are split into beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and are about four hours of simming plus some time for pre-brief and debrief. Now the simulations themselves are comprised of the four core systems, Cronus, Spartan, Ethos, and Adco, plus a flight director. Now for the mini sims, there's usually a role play flight director, which means someone from one of the groups in our divisions plays the role of flight director. And around mini sim 20, we get real flight directors to come in and sit on our sims. So our final evaluation, or our go for integrated, is mini sim 24. And if we pass that and there's open space in the integrated sim flow, we move on to those. Integrated sims are held in the same building as the real time mission control in another flight control room. So these ones always have a real flight director and generally have more positions than just the four core systems, depending on what's on the schedule for that sim. Now these ones run about eight hours long and our target is to take eight to 10 of them in order to get our final certification. So how have I been doing? Well, overall, uh, it's been going well. I'm on Minisim 18, or I just finished Minisim 18. Um, there's definitely been a lot of development from my first Minisim to now. And they always tell you to kind of uh, focus on one thing and fix and work on one thing at a time. So I've definitely been trying to do that. So in general, my communication has improved. Um, I'm still working on making sure I don't ramble and give more details than are needed. I'm also working on making sure that my recommendations are clear when we're working through a failure. And I also need to work on my active listening to make sure I see the big picture with what's involved in my own system. So I know it sounds like a lot, but trust me, it's come a long way since my first mini sims. Of course, there's other things I've been working on. I, uh, I went back and reviewed some things in my technical training just to make sure I really understood the concepts. I've been working more on my confidence in my calls to the other flight controllers and especially the flight director, and also just a confidence in my own knowledge. Um, I've been focusing more on safing and just moving forward instead of getting hung up on signatures I might not immediately recognize. Um, one of the more important things is just you know, when there's a million things happening and every single flight controller seems like they have their own problem to address, um, it just kind of taking a moment to step back and think about my signatures and think about what the next best action is going to be, what my priorities are, and just kind of really think about what the forward plan is going to be. And then um, I need to work on standing up for my system and making sure that the team knows what the configuration is and what our next worst failure might be. So it's definitely a learning experience every single time and it's never easy and smooth sailing, right? Um, and you know, it, it, I get tripped up sometimes and I've had rough scenarios here and there, but my midpoint evaluation, of course it was my midpoint evaluation, went pretty much like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I felt pretty down afterwards. Um, I was pretty much ready to just well, I am trash and a disgrace. I am so sorry for wasting your time. Here's my badge. I will see myself out. See you later. Bye. All right, bye. Yep. So, like I said, it's always a learning experience. And I'm taking the lessons I learned from that sim and using them as I move on. Plus, some certified people in my branch also came to me and told me, you know, if they'd had rough sims before. 
no one's perfect, so I'm keeping my chin up and pressing forward. That's all for this episode. Be sure to check out my other sites and pages and take a look at the first or previous episodes if you haven't already. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time and for many more as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks, and have a great week.